You're listening to the Dental Zone podcast. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall. This is the place that supports you to understand your dental issues, the causes and how to prevent them, empowering each individual to get the most out of life while bearing a stunning smile. Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist from Brisbane, Australia. Thank you for joining the show. You can learn more at holisticdentistry.au. Let's get in the zone. It's uh, great to be here again sharing my weekly show about holistic dentistry and your overall health, how your teeth relate, relate to you, and the oral systemic health link. Today I'm going to be talking about gum disease, why it's important, what causes it, how to treat it, and the impact that it has on your health and well-being. So I'm going to be talking about gum disease. Now gum disease is a condition of the mouth caused by bacteria. And when it's allowed to accelerate and be untreated, it's called periodontal disease. Now periodontal disease is an inflammatory disease caused by bacteria. It's a disease of the bone and gums that surround the teeth. And typically what happens is your gums shrink back from around the base of your tooth and your teeth become loose. You might see that there's some blood or pus discharging at your gum line where your tooth sits and you can have pain or be grinding your teeth. Other symptoms of periodontal disease can take place elsewhere in your body. So you could be diabetic or insulin resistant or you may have given birth to a preterm or low weight birth baby or be suffering from coronary artery disease. Now these symptoms as I've talked about in previous videos are caused by advanced forms of gum disease called periodontal disease. And this is because they have the similar causative factors of inflammation. But gum disease is essentially an inflammatory condition caused by bacteria. And those bacteria start to breed under the gum line, they penetrate the gum tissue, and they start to breed inside the gum and then travel around the bloodstream where they affect the whole body. You have to treat gum disease when it's called periodontal disease aggressively, especially if there are signs that it could be elsewhere in the body, because that shows that the the disease has progressed to a point where the whole body systems are starting to break down. So the gums and tissues around your teeth become inflamed, and that's because of the bacterial plaque that build up on your teeth. Now, gingivitis or gum disease is a mild form of periodontal disease, and it's caused by not brushing or flossing your teeth well enough on a regular basis. With gingivitis, your gums are irritated, they become red and swollen, and they bleed easily. You may also have bad breath, but the bone that holds your teeth in the bone around your teeth has not been affected at this stage. In the more advanced form of periodontal disease, the gums are red, Sorry, the gums and bone around your teeth are impacted. There is destruction of the jawbone, the part that holds your teeth in. And this affects the ligament or the bit of connective tissue, the fibres that attach your tooth to the bone that it sits in. When you have periodontal disease, this process of destruction advances in the direction of the ends of your roots. But the outer layer of the gum can actually stay quite high. But underneath that, damage to the bone is going on. And the fibres around your teeth that keep those teeth in place are actually being destroyed. So this one is called a pocket or a gap between the root and the tooth. And this causes loosening of the teeth and ultimately the loss of the teeth themselves. What can we do about this? Well, first of all, we have to be able to diagnose it. So to assist us to diagnose periodontal disease and the extent of the damage, the hygienist or the dentist will measure the depth of that pocket, the depth of your gum using a special measuring ruler. And we slip that between your tooth and your gum. And that allows us to know what's going on underneath the surface. Just like your doctor when they listen to your heart or they take your blood pressure, they don't want to be guessing about what's going on just by looking at the outside and going, oh, well, you look quite well. This measurement of the gum depth allows us to check for inflammation and bleeding and also to see whether there's been any bone damage or bone loss. 
And that measurement needs to be done a minimum of once a year. So we can keep a close eye on what's happening and we can see what's going on with your gum health without trying to guess by looking from the outside in. So what causes um, gum disease? So it's an infection of the gums and on average it affects over half of the adult population. But in age groups over 65, it's more likely that over 75% of people are going to be having um, periodontal disease. So it starts with plaque. Now this is the sticky substance that forms on your teeth. It's actually caused by bacteria. And when plaque's been there a while, it's considered what we call a biofilm. And this is like a bacterial slime and it grows and grows over time. It's like one of those blobby monsters in a horror movie happening in your mouth. Now, if you're finding this hard to, to picture what biofilm is, it's actually, if you think of the inside of a drain pipe down in the sink, and when you remove it, it's got all that slimy stuff inside it that you have to wash out. That's actually biofilm. Now, biofilm in your mouth is made up of bacteria and proteins. And it actually becomes a self-organizing community or colony. So it becomes one organism that works together and it's very highly function. So biofilm can actually extract iron from your blood cells around the gums by bursting them open. And this can lead to anemia. So the bacteria that live in your mouth and around the gum lines are very dependent on the pH or the acidity and alkalinity of the area that they live in. And they like to hide in places where they're not going to get disturbed. So they're going to get down in those little crevices where you can't get with your toothbrush and your floss because that's the environment that they like. And unfortunately, that's where they're going to cause the most damage as well. So the outermost layer of the biofilm is a mix of what we call aerobic bacteria. That means they need oxygen to survive. Deeper down, the bacteria become more anaerobic, which means they don't need oxygen. Now these anaerobic bacteria release what are called endotoxins and these are really harmful to the rest of your body. So the biofilms are suspected to be linked to things like chronic inflammatory response syndrome and it's associated with multiple symptoms like weakness, pain, persistent cough, shortness of breath, joint pain, appetite swings. Uh, night sweats, excessive thirst, problems with regulating your temperature, um, mental impairment, blurred vision and irritable bowel-like symptoms. So if you've got biofilms breeding in your body, it can be very serious if they're spreading around your system. Now, the only way to disturb that dental biofilm, the plaque, is to physically agitate it and break it loose. So when you come in to see the hygienist or the dentist and they're doing their clean, they're actually breaking up this biofilm and trying to get it to come away from the teeth and disorganise it so it can't have such a firm attachment and organisation. Now, they're quite sensitive to things like ozone gas and nanoparticle silver. And so these are avenues that in dentistry we're now exploring to treat gum disease. So it's really important to break that biofilm up on a regular basis. So this is why we encourage you to floss and brush effectively. So you break down that biofilm and also brushing your teeth with good products that are naturally antibacterial and caring for your teeth and not going to harm your good bacteria. So as that biofilm accumulates on your teeth and it's not physically removed, it will start to harden and calcify. So the minerals from your saliva come together and form what's known as tartar or calculus. Now, I can see some people when we're examining them and they seem to just create tartar no matter what, and it forms and forms in spite of the fact that they've got good health, a good physical overall health, and a high standard of, of dental care and dental hygiene. Tartar buildup is very dependent on the pH, the acidity or the alkalinity of the saliva and the surface texture of the teeth. So once tartar starts to form, it creates a rough surface and that surface allows more bacteria to adhere and you get more bacteria growing. As the bacteria grow, they're going to affect and harm the gums and the support tissues around your teeth and you develop what is known as gum disease or gingivitis and that's 
symptoms of that are red, swollen gums, bleeding when you brush and floss, bad breath, and sometimes you can have like a really sort of unpleasant taste in your mouth, quite a sour or metallic -y taste as well. Gum disease is something that you get quite commonly when you don't brush effectively and the plaque bacteria accumulate around your teeth. You can get red, swollen gums, bleeding, bad breath, and sometimes uh, unpleasant taste in your mouth. So the process of going from having bacterial buildup, plaque, and gingivitis is affected by a number of factors. So how healthy you are and how, how healthy your immune system is. So if you're eating well and you're getting enough sleep and you manage your stress well, you're more likely to have a nice healthy mouth. But if you're not eating all the right things, you're not sleeping properly and you're stressed and you're anxious and you're just not taking care of yourself, you're gonna be setting yourself up for poor immune health and gum issues because of that. So the right foods are essential for good gum health. So not enough vitamin C will cause a condition called scurvy where the gums actually break down, bleed heavily and pull away from the teeth. Without vitamin C, your body can't produce collagen. And collagen is the scaffolding of the connective tissue and that connective tissue holds your teeth in your gums. It's like this little, um, what's the word? So it's like this little bag that sits really tight around the teeth, like a sling that holds them in. So when sailors used to travel the world on, on their long ocean voyages for months on end, and they weren't able to get fresh fruits and vegetables back in the day, um, they didn't know it, but due to the lack of vitamin C in their diet, their teeth would end up falling out. And this happened until scientists realised that eating fresh citrus fruits could prevent the scurvy. And that's how the British sailors got the nickname Limey, because they would eat so many limes to, to ward off the scurvy. So one of the best ways to prevent periodontal disease is to eat nutritional foods get plenty of vitamin C, as well as brushing and flossing twice a day. So untreated gingivitis or gum disease will worsen and become what's called periodontitis. Itis means inflammation and periodonts is the support structures of the teeth really. So in periodontitis, the bacteria will continue to grow and it will destroy both the gums and the supporting bone. The pockets form where your teeth separate from your gums and the bone. And this is serious, irreversible damage that's gonna to lead to tooth loss if it's not treated. So you end up with bad breath, loose wobbly teeth, infections around your gums, gum abscesses, and ultimately no teeth. But worse still, you know, if it couldn't be anything worse than losing your teeth, is you have the impact that it has on you and your overall health. Your gum health, your periodontal health, is crucial to your overall health and well-being. The gums and bones and the connective tissues around them are connected by direct pathways to other areas of your body. The blood that supplies your gums circulates around the whole body, carrying bacteria from your mouth, infection and inflammation everywhere. And we've known this fact since at least the 1800s, if not before. So this migration of disease through your body is just like how a cancer spreads. The bacteria from your gums metastasize and seed disease in other places of your body. The plaque bacteria activate your immune system to fight the inflammation that's going on. This triggers your body to release different proteins like cytokines, and this is designed to help defend your body. The bacteria can directly infect your blood, <coughs> excuse me, and cause a bacteremia, which is blood poisoning, which can make you feel quite unwell or cause this low grade malaise where you just don't quite feel right. You're just not 100% in yourself. Now, inflammation on its own is a good thing. It's a, a normal bodily process that gets provoked by injury. It's your body's response to repair and heal itself. And short term, it's called acute inflammation. And it's a good thing because it's telling your body there's a problem. It's sending the white blood cells in and it's dealing with the issue. However, when inflammation is ongoing and prolonged, what we call chronic, it actually becomes very damaging to the body.
So when inflammation is revved up and it gets stuck on that on position by something that's triggering it, say like having a sprained ankle that you insist on running on rather than resting, it's going to take much longer for the inflammation to switch off and for your body to heal from the cycle of inflammation and damage. Now, in periodontal disease, the chronic nature of the disease process creates this perpetual worsening cycle in your body. The chronic bacterial infection triggers chronic inflammation, and you'll see an increase in inflammatory markers actually in your body, like C-reactive protein. Now, C-reactive protein is one of the signs for heart disease, and it's actually a better predictor of heart disease than our cholesterol levels. So, in my opinion, and this is not medical advice, please don't take it to be medical advice. If you want medical advice, then you do need to check with your doctor. But as far as I'm concerned, that we should be testing for C-reactive protein and not cholesterol to see if someone's at risk of heart disease. It, you know, if it's such a strong marker, then we need to be checking for it. So C-reactive protein is created in your liver and its job is to fight inflammation that, co that comes from any cause. Now, successful treatment of periodontal disease reduces inflammation in the mouth and also reduces inflammation in the body because it stops the bacteria traveling around your bloodstream. And this can lower your C-reactive protein levels and at the same time, reduce the risk factors for heart attack. So treating periodontal disease reduces heart attack risk. And there's been some studies that show that this is far more significant than changes that can be taken by taking prescription medication. So if you've got high cholesterol and indicators of heart disease, it makes sense to me that you go get your mouth checked. And if you've got bleeding gums and inflamed gums, you've got to get that condition under control and stabilised. Otherwise, those medication are not going to be making any impact and your arches are just going to be getting more and more clogged up. This is the process of how chronic periodontal disease plays a role in the development of coronary artery disease, hardening of the arteries. And it increases your risk of stroke and heart attacks. So I also think if you've been diagnosed with something like cancer, you should consider if periodontal disease is playing a role. Um, it binds me every week, you know, studies coming out all the time that link gum disease to systemic health conditions. And gum disease has been linked to oral cancer, esophageal and gut cancers, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, and even bowel cancers. So. The, there's a link between the causative factors of, of the two conditions going hand in hand. So if we can treat and reduce inflammation in your mouth, we can help reduce inflammation in your body and we can help prevent you getting serious health issues. So another systemic disease that's associated with periodontal disease is diabetes. And the inflammation response is similar in diabetes as it is to periodontal disease. Both cause poor healing and increase susceptibility to infections. Now, obesity and type 2 diabetes are also associated with insulin resistance, high blood pressure and hardening of the arteries. So when you've got periodontal disease, it actually makes it harder for you to control your blood sugars. And having your blood sugars out of control actually make it harder for you to manage your gum health. So it's very important that we don't just focus on fixing one. We've got to work on the body as a whole and look at everything that's going on. And that's where oral systemic health is so important. So chronic inflammation from gum disease and just generally through the body has been declared to be part of insulin resistance syndrome and can make metabolic disorders like diabetes grow worse. Inflammation is even a factor in Alzheimer's disease and there are links between the incidence of periodontal disease and people with Alzheimer's. And that's because infection in your body can affect your central nervous system. They've even found bacteria from the mouth in the brain lesions of people with Alzheimer's. Uh, periodontal disease is linked to rheumatoid arthritis and arthritic conditions. And people with rheumatoid arthritis are more likely to have periodontal disease or end up with complete loss of their teeth because of the inflammatory processes that are going on. I'm just having a little private joke with myself. I'm like, maybe I should give myself a dollar every time I say periodontal disease tonight and then I wouldn't have to come to work. 
<laughs> I seem to have said it a lot, but that is the topic. So I hope you're enjoying it and learning more about what's going on with your gum health and why we take it so seriously. And so I do take gum disease very seriously and so should you. So when you see signs of swollen, red or bleeding gums, um, you need to take that into account. Don't ignore it because chronic periodontal disease can turn into so much more. It can become serious problems that can destroy your health, your quality of life and shorten your lifespan unnecessarily. But the good news is, yes, there is some good news. The good news is that periodontal disease can be treated. The goal is to reduce your inflammation in your gums, support your gums to heal, reduce the amount of harmful bacteria in your mouth and bring down those C-reactive protein levels. And therefore we can improve your overall health. We want you to keep your teeth. And to do this, we need to remove that biofilm of plaque bacteria and the tartar buildup, and then support you to have a better mouth environment by utilizing things like nutrition, supplements, um, ozone therapy, and lasers, and changes in lifestyle. I mean, one of the biggest risk factors for developing periodontal disease is smoking. So if we can get people to stop smoking, we can automatically changing so many things in their body, getting their gums healthier and looking after their overall health. So our aim here at Evolve Dental is to provide the least invasive procedures to give the most effective results whilst being as kind to the body with the treatments as we possibly can. Um, traditionally, treatment for advanced gum disease is... Um, gum surgery and that can be quite painful and invasive as well as costly and expensive. So what we do is the area of your mouth that is affected, we treat that with local anaesthetic beforehand and that means you have a much more comfortable experience and a speedier recovery. And then our job is to get down into those deep pockets and remove the bacterial buildup and disinfect down into those spaces. What we'd like to see is the gums returning to health and attaching tighter to your teeth. And we were always told you can't regenerate the bone around the teeth, but with certain laser techniques and technologies, that is actually starting to happen. So that is something that we are researching more and addressing here in our clinic. So our job is to treat the periodontal disease and the key is to put a, a halt to that destructive inflammation. You wanna get your gums to heal, and then we need to maintain the gum health with regular professional care and keep that disease in remission. Now, the thing with gum disease is it does have flare-ups. So if you get run down or you're stressed or your diet isn't so great, um, you're not sleeping well, then you can see a flare-up and you can go back into active disease. Now, by seeing you regularly, we can catch that early treat the active disease very quickly, get things to switch off again and minimise any damage and bone loss. So it's very important that even once the disease is addressed, that we ensure that we keep it that way with those regular visits. Now there's a twofold thing going on with gum disease and that is to make sure that it stays in remission. We have to address not only just the gum health, but ensure that the forces of your bite are correctly balanced because damage from uneven biting pressure on your teeth means that you're gonna be losing bone from around them and the treatment's not gonna have an optimal outcome and we're only gonna get short-term benefits. So what I recommend is that we do gum therapy and um, excuse me, bite therapy at the same time to address both issues simultaneously to give an effective solution. It's really important to have regular follow-up and review, monitor your healing and have periodic maintenance visits to stop the bacteria buildup and to stop it from switching on active disease again. So if periodontal disease is left and you don't get it treated, you're eventually going to lose the teeth that it's affecting. So how and when that happens depends on your overall health and the strength of the bones around the teeth. Yes, we can replace missing teeth, but in periodontal disease, what happens is you've often lost so much bone from where the teeth would have been sitting that it makes it very challenging and difficult to replace the teeth and it compromises our ability to provide you with an effective, comfortable and affordable solution. 
So once you start losing teeth, the remaining ones have to do more work. So they're already stressed and overworked. And then we've got to put false teeth in or fake teeth in. And then your real teeth have to do even more work to cope with supporting that dental prosthesis as well. So like, whilst dentures might seem like a quick and cheap and simple solution, they can be quite difficult to get used to. They can be uncomfortable and interfere with your speech, your eating and your ability to taste your food. The other thing is they only perform at about 25% of the effectiveness of your natural teeth. So when you have a denture, you're losing 75% of your chewing capacity, which means you can't chew the foods that you like, you can't break down your foods properly, and you don't get the optimal nutrition from them because they're not being digested properly. So the goal for us in holistic dentistry is to save your teeth and to treat your gums so that the periodontal disease doesn't ruin your health by provoking inflammation elsewhere. So we don't want that inflammation spreading into your body and causing issues elsewhere. So by keeping your teeth and gums clean, you can prevent a host of systemic diseases, whereas letting that periodontal disease spread can worsen your condition. So it's very treatable and you owe it to yourself to take care of it now and to get it taken care of properly and effectively. That 10 minute clean and polish that your dentist does once or twice a year is not an effective treatment for periodontal disease. Once you have periodontal disease, you need a course of gum therapy that involves working closely with a skilled dental hygienist who will spend several hours, yes, I said hours, over the course of your treatment to get your gums healthy and halt that destructive inflammation. So whilst I can give you a clean, and I can break down the tartar and the, the plaque bacteria build up on your teeth and make your teeth feel nice and clean and fresh. That is not treating the, the gum disease. It's not getting in those pockets and removing the buildup. And to do that takes time. And it takes a lot of skill to do that and specialised instruments and equipments. And that's why we have a hygienist here in our dental office and she is treating disease, not cleaning teeth. So your gum health needs to be thoroughly and accurately assessed. We need proper diagnosis. We need to get those gum measurements and we've got to ascertain the level of disease and inflammation. Then what we do is we create a plan of action that is tailored to your gum condition and your specific health needs. Now, I firmly believe that we should be treating on, that our focus should be on treating disease and not cleaning teeth. And it's our role to help you avoid developing health conditions that could have been prevented through better management and treatment of your periodontal disease and by encouraging lifestyle changes. So please don't ignore red, swollen or bleeding gums and bad breath or teeth that are moving or getting loose. These are all warning signs of gum disease and it needs to be addressed before it's too late for your teeth and for your health. But to recap, if you've got any concerns about your gum health, if you've seen redness, bleeding or swollen gums, you've got bad breath, things don't feel fresh, um, you've got painful gums or sensitive teeth, then please don't ignore that. Get that treated. And if you'd like to see us, then please give us a call 07-3720-1811. And our team in the office will be happy to take your questions, book you in for a consultation. And tune in next week when I'm going to be discussing how to, I think I'm going to be talking about, yes, I'm going to talk about um, how to eat to prevent gum disease and tooth decay. Thank you very much for joining me. This is the Dental Zone podcast. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist in Brisbane, Australia. Check us out, holisticdentistry.au. Until next time, stay in the zone. You've been listening to the Dental Zone podcast with Dr. Rachel Hall. For health, lifestyle, fitness and a great smile, get in the zone.